let's see how we can use Helm in order to simplify the process of creation of development and production environments. We will issue the following command, microkts, enable DNS and Helm. Uh, we will need both of the services and we'll be using the version 3 of Helm. I've already uh, have enabled those. We can see what's inside of our cluster by typing microkts kubectl get all minus a. Here we have the core DNS which is provided uh, by the uh, DNS. If we type microkts inspect, we should be able to see all the services running by the microkts status. We should see that also the Helm tree is enabled. I've used the following command, so it is Helm tree create. A project chart and this will automatically scaffold a chart project for us by using helm and that's the basic structure that we have so we can open this inside of visual studio code so that's the project structure we have templates and charts actually i have deleted everything from the template and i have uh, created my own the way uh, helm functions is uh, by reading all the values that we have from the values and the chart uh, YAML files and then pushes them up inside of predefined uh, configurations that we have inside of the templates and uh, afterwards executes this passing it to the Kubernetes. As you can see uh, in the chart YAML we have basic information about uh, what kind of application we'll be distributing and then I've uh, added to the values YAML the following uh, fields. So basically I've created one environment, which is development. And as you can see, we have the Nginx, which will be on port 80 in our cluster. So nothing fancy here. Now let's see how a certain pod can be created. This is a configuration of a pod. And as you can see, there is nothing different uh, here than just using uh, secrets inside of uh, the pod, which we are binding uh, to certain uh, directories. Later, we'll show the secrets. For now, what's interesting is that by using uh, those uh, double curly braces, uh, we are able to reference the values file. So with dot values, we are referencing the values file. Then, for example, image repository will go to here to this entry and then uh, to the repository and it will actually reference this string here, nginx. The same is here for values.env, it will reference the dev here. So the main benefit that Helm offers is that we can uh, change here dev uh, to production and other types of environments, or we can create uh, multiple uh, files with uh, values uh, inside then we can have uh, templates and uh, based on what we have inside of our values the templates will be changed and will be rendered uh, differently so let's see now the config map here as you can see we are able to switch between two different ports and urls based on the value of the def which we are getting from the values file dot env this way if we go to the terminal and type microkts Helm tree install, and then the name of our chart, which is a project chart. And then we have to specify the uh, current directory with the files. We'll be using uh, this directory here that we are in. We see that uh, the project chart has been deployed. And if we check uh, right now the status of our cluster, we'll see that we have our pod running. And as you can see, the name of the pod is def uh, here. We can also see the config maps and we can describe this uh, config maps. So we can type uh, describe a config map and then the name of the config map. And uh, we see that we're using a port 8000 and our URL is devproject.com. Now, if we go back to our configuration and here in the values, we change this, for example, to production and we save and go back to the terminal where we will refresh the chart by typing helm tree upgrade project chart of course the dot and we see that the revision is number two first let's see what's happening inside of our cluster right now we see that the pod is named production db client pod and that's because here in the pod we're using values.env and that's now prod the next thing we should see is that the port has changed to 80 and the URL is different. 
So let's get the config maps. So by typing micro ks kubectl get config maps. We see that we have project chart config map production. Let's see what's inside. Again with kubectl uh, describe config map and project chart config map prod. All right. And we see that the port is 80 and the URL has changed to our production URL. Now we'll focus on the secrets. So for the secret file, we see that we are creating two different uh, username and passwords based on the environmental values. And here we are checking whether the environmental values equals to dev. Here we have dev. Uh, then we will have MySQL and admin as a password. Otherwise, they will be root and root. Uh, those values, uh, you know how to achieve them by just typing in terminal, for example, this, uh, which will encode the output of admin into base64. Now let's check the usage of the password. Here inside of the pod, we're using this secret and uh, we're mounting it using a volume into etc secret volume. So our next goal is to log in into the pod and to see uh, whether we are able to browse the secret. By typing micro ks kubectl uh, get pods, uh, we see that we have this uh, production uh, db client pod. So we can enter inside by typing uh, kubectl exec with the interactive terminal. We'll enter into the pod uh, prod uh, db client pod. And then we'll execute uh, bin bash inside. And of course, this will be with one dash here. So we are inside of the pod right now, which is running. And if we go to the etc directory to check our password, then go to the directory of a secret volume, which is mounted. And here we see the password and the username. If we go and check what's inside of the password, uh, we see the output here of a root. This means that we have successfully mounted the passwords here and at the same time they are not exposed uh, to the administrators of the, the cluster because they are saved in a secret. That's a very good approach when you are taking care of the storage of your passwords and uh, their security. All right, guys, that was our initial experience with Helm. Of course, you can extend those charts and produce more sophisticated uh, setups. I hope the information will help you to enjoy the benefits of uh, Helm. And if you have enjoyed the information, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you.